Hello everybody, Dr. Kaylee Garrett Zimmerman here, physical therapist. Today I'm starting my four-part series on education about the diaphragm. Today specifically we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the diaphragm and why it's so important to understand how it works, where it is, and, and how big it is. Um, so the anatomy is quite fascinating actually if you look at it because you can see this is the front, your chest bone your sternum, and you have your xiphoid process. Your diaphragm actually attaches with fibers to the front there on the xiphoid process. It attaches on the inside layer of the lower six ribs, and then the top two to three lumbar vertebrae. And you can see how big it is from this side view. So it goes from your low back all the way to the front of your rib cage. So it's very large. From the front view, you can imagine it goes from side to side on the ribs. So you've got this side, and then it goes all the way to that side. And it's so important because it's actually the strongest breathing muscle that you have. So if you're not using it appropriately, you're not breathing appropriately, and you're not giving your body the amount of oxygen that it needs, most likely. If you're having any type of shoulder pain, if you're having any type of low back pain, upper back pain, um, anything such as headaches, general pain at all, or if you're getting neck pain because you're overusing your other muscles, you probably want to take into account that you need to look at the function of your diaphragm. Because if you're not using this muscle appropriately, then most likely what's going to happen is you're going to start to use other muscles in the neck and other muscles in other areas of your body, which is going to cause increased pain and increased fatigue. If you can learn how to appropriately control and contract your diaphragm, then you can assist in your sleeping patterns. You can fall asleep quicker, and you can sleep longer and sleep better, and you can also decrease pain quite quickly. I wanted to show you this video so that you can kind of see the mechanics of breathing and how the diaphragm works. You can see that when you breathe in, your diaphragm goes down, so it moves down towards your tailbone, and the central tendon, which is the tendon that attaches to the ribs here, is actually lowering. Why it does that is so it gives the lungs more room to fill up with more air, so the diaphragm actually gets out of the way if it's functioning appropriately. Now when you breathe out, it moves up and it takes up the rest of that space. So it takes up the rest of the space and pushes the pressure up to allow and assist the lungs to get the rest of that air out, up and out through the nasal cavity. So if you can't function with your diaphragm, you can imagine how that's going to decrease coordination and limit your ability to breathe appropriately, whether it's with exercise, whether it's with running, whether it's with sleeping, whatever it is. You need to be able to kind of assess and determine whether or not you're using it appropriately and what you can do to improve on it. Um, the reason that I'm so excited about the diaphragm and why I talk about it so often is because it is part of the core. Your diaphragm is the top part of your core system and then you have your abdominal muscles, and then you have your lumbar spine muscles, your hip muscles, and your pelvic floor. And as you know, I specialize in pelvic floor physical therapy, and so it's very important to learn how to use all of these different sections together in order to function and coordinate everything appropriately to decrease pain and to improve overall independence and function. If you have any specific questions about anatomy or the way that the diaphragm moves or how it functions, please let me know. The next couple of videos, we're going to learn how to assess the functioning of your diaphragm to see if you are having proper contraction, proper breathing patterns. And then we're going to learn a couple of techniques to help assist you with that. Hopefully, you will tune back in on Wednesday, and I hope to see you all then. Have a great rest of your day.